yes 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 okay. i request to our respected professor uh, salunke madam to introduce dr harsha hegde sir thank you ek minute for this session now i am going to welcome dr harsha hegde from icmr national institute of traditional medicine belgavi karnataka on behalf of hgm college karad and human resource development center pune i welcome you sir for this session thank you so much ma'am hey, one minute sir i am going to introduce in uh, short uh, sir has done msc in botany from karnataka university dharwad india he has done phd in botany in 2004 from karnataka university dharwad india uh, his uh, his field of research is plant systematics uh, there is a wide area of research and research experience is about 22 years from 1999 to 2004 uh, he is research fellow in karnataka university dharwad karnataka india from may 2005 to january 2007 uh, he is research senior research fellow regional medical research center uh, belgavi from january 2007 to august 2011 uh, he is uh, scientist regional medical research center belgavi uh, that is we uh, term as belgaw sir we not called as belgavi but belgaw from right. september 2011 to august 2015 he is working as scientist uh, c regional medical research center nehru nagar belgaw from september 2015 to 2019 uh, he is also work as a scientist icmr national institute of traditional medicine and from september 2019 uh, he is working as scientist e icmr national institute of traditional medicine belgaum uh, sir has wide research uh, research experience he has attended 46 conferences workshops and seminars he has completed seven research projects and two are two projects are outgoing the number of publications are there about 90 publications he has made in uh, reputed journals he have number of uh, memberships and recognitions he is honorary member of editorial board of international journal of biosciences and technology and associate journals he is also a reviewer of journal of ethano uh, pharmacology elsewhere journal then he is also member of institute uh, institutional ethics committee kie university belgaum he is member of institutional ethics committee bmv ayurveda mahavidyalay belgaum he is working as chairman institutional ethics committee kims hubli he is working as chairman institutional ethics committee jain medical college belgaum and also he is work as research guide phd guide and he has guided uh, now there are seven uh, students are working and out of that three have completed their phd degree such eminent personality uh, that resource persons we, uh, we have i request dr harsha hegde sir to deliver his valuable speech yeah thank you so much madam for your uh, introduction uh, and i would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to interact with all the participants uh, may i share my screen please yes sir yes yes
I think it's not coming. I think there is some. Let me try. You can share, sir. Yeah, but uh, it is not uh, sharing actually. I'm trying to share it. Visible? Screen is visible now, madam? No, no. There is some. It's not being shared. That's what I'm trying. Just give me a minute, madam, please. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. There were some technical issues. There were some technical issues. That's why I couldn't join. Sorry. Okay, sir. Okay, it is happening always. No problem. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Once again, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Uh, today, I am going to speak on questionable publications. Especially, I am taking the example of predatory journals. How publishing in predatory journals harm science as well as the authors, the people, and the science as such. So I'm going to speak on overview of publishing, then trends in scientific publications, then how we have to select the journals. Then I'm going to discuss about predatory journals, how they work, and what are the problems, and how to avoid those publications. Looking into the scientific publishing, The first thing is the types of publications and why we do the publications. If you look into the academic publishing, it is in the form of journal articles, books, or other forms, which is published in the journals. If some of the articles, which are there in the face of manuscripts, or maybe a kind of a printed version, but it is not published, those are called gray literature. This gray literature, will not be counted as publications. Those will be there with limited circulations with the authors or with the known people. The review quality is also matters when we go for the publications. The next question is why researchers 
or maybe the academicians would like to publish their research articles. The first thing is to register their discovery on that date. That means if I am doing the discovery of some of the new uh, methods or technologies, I would like to put my seal or sign on that on that particular date. I have invented it. So the best way, apart from going for patenting, is to publish it. Then to get the quality of the research is checked or It is to check the research quality checked by others, especially when the article goes for a peer review, then automatically we'll come to know about the quality of our research, quality of our research publications. So that is one of the reasons for researchers to go for publication. Then we would like to emphasize on our work and we would like to other people to know our work, what we are doing. So that is one of the reason to go for the publication. And finally, we want to leave a permanent footmark of our research in the scientific field. If once our good research paper is published, research article is published, that will be there forever. Whether we, there, we are there or not, our research will be there forever. That is one of the reasons for we go for publications. Apart from that, uh, monetary benefit or to attract attention, many a times it is linked to degree or promotion or job. For example, if we have just completed our uh, master's or maybe PhD, then the number of publications counts for a job. If we are doing PhD, then as we all know, like minimum two publications are required for getting a degree of PhD. So that counts. If you are already there in the job, either in the research or in the teaching field, then automatically our promotion is many a times linked to number of publications, what we are doing and the quality of the publication. Uh, yeah, as a maybe kind of a joke, like the conflict of interest may be say, saying that this publication is basically for senior author's promotion or maybe junior author's job, that kind of situation we are facing. If you look into the trend of publishing, if we, a comparison, will let us compare it with earlier days of 1996, the majority of the publishing was defined to and limited to developed countries. Out of 207 countries in 1996, the, all the top countries in the publication numbers are developed countries like USA, Japan, UK, where they contributed about 63% of the publications. USA alone has contributed about 31% of the publications in 1996, which was followed by other countries, whereas the developing countries like China and India, they have released contributions. Here you can just see, in 1996, India was in 13th position in publishing scientific data in good journal. If you look into the current scenario, from 1996 to the last year, 2020, there has been a remarkable increase in the number of article publishing, both in quality as well as the quantity. There is 2.8 times increase in total number of publications. The growth rate in developed countries is almost stabilized, whereas there is an enormous increase in number of publications, number of articles from developing countries like China and India. US has seen the growth of 1.6% of increase in the scientific articles, whereas China showed 15.7, whereas India showed 5.5 times increase in number of uh, articles published in scientific journals. In 2020 alone, out of 229 countries, China has topped the list. Just remember, in 1996, it was USA, which was there in the top. In 2020, China took over the place. This graph shows the current scenario, where China is now top, US is second, and India has jumped to fourth position from the 13th in 1996. If you look into the number of sites per publication, Remind you, the number of sites per publication shows the quality of the publication. It depends on the journal, it depends on the content, it depends on the quality of the research work and the data. In 1996, the, each publication in US, it was cited 40 times, whereas in 2020, it has come to merely 12 times. 
Similarly, in UK, it is reduced. However, in China, it was in a going up from 9.5 sites per publication in 1996, it has reached to 12.3. Whereas in Indian scenario, it was 14 sites per publication in 1996, which is uh, which has come down drastically to 7.6 percent. This is matter of concern because as we have seen, India has jumped to fourth position from 13th positions in number of articles, whereas its quality has come down drastically. Meantime, if you look into the amount of publications in open access journals, again, there is a remarkable increase and gradual increase, of course, which was merely about 9% in 1996, it has reached more than 36% in 2020. 20, uh, 36 percent of the journals are now available as the open source and online journals. That is about the journals. If you look into the quality of our paper before going for publication, because we are talking about questionable publications. If our article or our scientific uh, communication is, is error free, we should check for originality of the idea. There shouldn't be any plagiarism. Then the manuscript type, whether we are going for the detailed articles, I think the previous author, uh, speaker spoke uh, wonderfully about all these types of articles, how to prepare the manuscript. I'll not go into the detail of this. Then when choosing the journals, there are different types of journals, as you know, like there are university journals, association journals, and then the commercial journals. Commercial journals, what we know, most, most of the journals, what we know about Elsewhere, Springer, Blackwell, all these things are commercial journals. When we are going for publication, as we all know, definitely what we are lo looking is two, three factors. Number one is indexing, where the journals are being, the articles in the journals are being indexed in Thomson Reuters, in PubMed, Current Contents, Scopus, uh, Google Scholar, Copernicus, wherever it is indexing. Or we are also looking into the citation index. What is the citation index of a each journal? Some of citation services are ISI, elsewhere publisher, that is called Scopus, then Indian Citation Index, and Google Scholars. These are the, some of the examples of the citation services where we can find the citation value of a journal. Then comes the impact factor. I'm just giving a glimpse of the factors which we have to look into when selecting the journal. The first one is the indexing, second one is the citation factor, and the impact factor. These are the kind of a checklist for a good journals, which we can choose to publish our research article. Uh, I may be, uh, I'm not going into detail. I hope uh, the earlier speakers may be uh, uh, told about the impact factor and its uh, calculation. I'm not going into the detail. This is a calculation for last three years of publication. It is not a quality content, but it shows how many times the articles have been referred in the further articles. That shows people how many people are looking into the articles, how many people are citing the articles, and how many people are referring the journal. So that calculates the impact factor of a journal. There is two kinds of uh, like uh, high impact factor journals, and there are common journals. For example, it's just a cartoon. It says that high impact factor, the new, it is uh, saying that by looking into the apple, he's saying it is a law of gravity. Whereas in low impact factor journals, where it is normally not peer reviewed, they say even oranges are also follow the law of gravity. That means it's just a copy of or the following of any of the earlier scientific papers. Then comes the crux of today's discussion that is a predatory journal. We know about the good journals. We know about good publishers. At the same time, we should be cautious about these kind of predatory journals. The first question is, what is a predatory journal? These are a kind of opportunities, uh, opportunistic publishing uh, venues. Those who exploits the academic need of the researchers. For example, as I shown, uh, shown in my previous slides, many people are very eager to publish their research articles, either because of their degrees, they want to complete their PhD, or for their promotions, because it is due and they want to have some good publications. The research work is good, 
but they are very eager to publish that what that is the thing which these kind of opportunistic publishing houses and caches there they publish it but the reward is very less or there is no reward as we know there is a saying that publish or perish in scientific community this scenario with relative ease of launching journals for example there are two ends at the one end the researcher is very eager to publish with a scenario of publish or perish at the same time there is very ease of creating a new journal page with the websites online journals now it is very common in 2020 onwards because of this pandemic situation so the both ends meet at predatory journal option people want to publish very easily at the same time journal want to get some benefit so they look for these kind of researchers there are some uh, common features of predatory journals like their primary goal is to make the money for example they'll cost you very high article publishing charges it may be in thousands then they do not care about the quality of the work published whatever work you give there will not be peer review there will not be any kind of uh, revisions they say it is accepted and they publish it they make false claims and promises they claim that we they have very high impact factor they don't call it as a impact factor they call it some different factors which looks very alike i'll come to that later in my slides then they say it is indexed in several indexing pages which is again a false claim then they engage in unethical business practices they say if you publish this we will give you free of your next publishing those kind of which is not true which is not acceptable but they claim for it then they fail to follow the accepted norms of practices of scholarly publishing they say it will be for example a journal if it is there the one of the ambition of the scientists or a researcher is their footmark should be there forever once they publish it but what happens in these kind of journals if they publish your good work the next day journal itself will not be there so it is not following the accepted norms of a good publication in a good publishing journals this is the normal flow of a publication number one is article submission then there is a correction process there is a editorial selection then it goes for the peer review there will be corrections there will be revisions then once it is accepted then they ask for the article publishing charge in few of the journals it may not be true for all cases then once you pay it it will go for the publications once you publish it it will be there forever in long term conservation in the databases it will be depicted in the databases and it is widely visible to the researchers globally on the contrary these predatory journals the second step is completely missing once you submit the article immediately they will ask for the article processing charges there will not be any kind of corrections editorial changes or peer review or revisions they say your journal is accepted for the publications as a fact finally it will not be accessible to the globally known researchers its footprint will not be there in the history of the science automatically it will vanish therefore the re review process in the journal it is very nicely depicted as you can see the researcher is going with the manuscript and the editor and the reviewers are ready to beat the article but it is well accepted saying that it will increase the quality of the manuscript but if they are getting the articles even now how they work the first thing is they claim to be a good open access operational procedures or they call it as a gold open access model that is gold open access model is they charge article processing fees in place of the hard copy what they send earlier it is called as the processing fees or subscription fees when the hard copy earlier we used to get we have to subscribe the journal that is called subscription fees in case of that as the journal is online they call it article processing charges the manuscript once you publish it is easily available freely to the readers but the charges they put it on the authors this is called golden open access the same model the predatory journals use for their money making they first start with unsolicited contacts for your mailbox they ask you to submit the articles they say we have a very prestigious journal with us we are publishing and we are inviting your article uh, day by day we are getting so many mails so if 
we are a bit careless and we, if you think that let us take a chance, then definitely we are going to be, to be a scapegoat for these predatory journals. Then the research and the area of the research as well as the journal, they doesn't match the common field. But still they say that you are a very good uh, researcher and we would like to have your article in our journals. The title of the journal may be different and their invitation to you or me, like we are working in a different field, that doesn't count. They just want to have our manuscript in their journal. Then as I said, they make false claims like they say within a day we'll have a peer review and revision. They say our impact factor is very high, above 15 and all those things. Then they ask us, they give a kind of uh, false uh, feeling that we are going to be uh, published in a very good journal to solicit our papers. Then meantime, they also give a very short deadline. Like if there's a, a, a mail, if you click on the mail, they say that another two days left for your submission. It's the last date for submission so that we have to submit within two days. So it gives a very short window period for thinking whether we have to submit it or not to the authors. Once it is submitted, they charge excessively as publication fees. And moreover, if you ask for, they say we have given 2% of discounts. But that also is a kind of a predatory me me mechanism. Like, okay, then we think that, okay, they are giving some discount. Why don't I publish, it, uh, publish my article in that journal? So that's again a kind of a uh, trap. Then once it is accepted, it is published immediately without looking into any content or the matter. So these are some of the working flow of these predatory journals. Meantime, they are also looking into, as I said, different factors. They say it is uh, impact factor, it is uh, uh, indexed in uh, ranking in Shimago and many other uh, sites they cite. Then they say, apart from uh, impact factor, they say site factor, digital online identifier database system, global impact factor. Likewise, the, it is nowhere mentioned. Like these are the terms what they have generated of their own, which is nowhere linked to globally accepted norms of journal publishing. So. I'm giving you some of the example. For example, this is uh, inbox where there is lot of uh, uh, kind of uh, invitations from different journals saying that we have, for example, open uh, journal applied sciences, journal of global biosciences. It's a kind of unsolicited mails uh, requesting for our manuscripts. If you click on any of those, uh, we'll get, I'm just giving an example. This is IOSR journal of pharmacy where you can just see like they say that the five years impact factor is 15.430 which is a never true for any kind of uh, journals for example uh, one of the good journal journal of ethnopharmacology has uh, from elsewhere it has impact factor of around five so these people claim their impact factor is about 15.430 which is never true and see the last date of submission they say 30th of November and notification of acceptance in five to seven days. And within seven days, your manuscript is published. So these are the traps. Like they say it is very fast publishing. They say it is very high impact factor journals. If a so researcher is new or he is very impatient for publishing his article, research work, then definitely they'll be pray for these kind of offers. Uh, then this is very interesting. This is one of the journal's uh, kind of logo. Can any one of the participants say what kind of logo it is? Have you any uh, idea? This logo uh, kind of, have you seen this logo earlier in any of the publishing houses? Any Anyone please? Yes, where? Yeah, that is the trap. Like, yes, where? Yes, uh, it, is, it looks very similar to elsewhere. It is called Indian Science, but just have a look of the, the symbol or the logo of the elsewhere. Here the tree is black and white. Here they have made it very nicely colored. The sage, the wise person uh, under the tree is standing here in the elsewhere, but here he is sitting. So these are the traps. People normally what they think is once they look into it, they think that, okay, it is of elsewhere. So they never think of. They say, okay, let's go ahead with the publication. But unfortunately, these are all the traps. They just mimic, they copy and forge the logo and the name of the journal sometimes so that people can be easily attracted towards their journal. 
Another example, American Journal of Phytomedicine and Clinical Therapeutics. Again, there is unsolicited, unsolicited mails from them for uh, the months together saying that every day we request your article. Once we go into their uh, homepage, it is very interesting. This gentleman is from Iran. Many times I would like to add here, like many journals put the name of the scientists, reputed people as their editorial board members or editors, even without acknowledging, acknowledging them or getting their consent. Many times I may not be aware, like my name is there in one of the journals as editor. So who knows, like that is quite possible. So here this person's name is there as uh, editor, chief, he is from Iran. The name says American Journal of Phytomedicine. And see here, this journal is published from Pubicoin International Publications in Bhopal. So this is the trap. Several, several times the name says Global Journal, American Journal, European Journal, but the journal is being published from somewhere in India, somewhere in the corner, and the editor is from some other place. And if we try to look into this place, this may not exist physically there. So because in the online journey, everything is possible, we should be aware about all these things. That's why these credible journals, they have a lot of peers, reviews, revisions, then finally it is accepted, whereas predatory journals, they have a red carpet welcome for our articles. They say, come, we are ready to publish our articles, provided you are ready to pay the heavy fees for publications. Though we are aware about predatory journals, it is in 2004, this was data is a bit old, I couldn't get the recent data. There are 11,873 predatory journals from 996 publishers. And it's an astonishing number. In 2004 itself, there are 4,20,000 articles published in these journals. So just think about the quantum of research work which went waste in a particular year. In this, the majority is published from Asia, that means developing countries, and in Western countries, 18%. The contribution, less contribution is from uh, developed countries, whereas in Asia, that is uh, developing countries, we have maximum contributions for these predatory journals. Let us look into the scenario in India. India is unfortunately having a host for highest number of predatory journals in the world. So it is around 35% of the predatory journals originating in India. A study was carried out uh, for five months. In uh, 2016, uh, and they have uh, 480 authors have been interviewed. They have looked into 3,300 papers from 350 predatory journals. The result showed that 51% of the colleges affiliated to various universities and uh, autonomous colleges have been published. 18% of the publications were pro from private universities, 15% were from the state universities, and even national institutes, up to 11% they have published in these predatory journals. In the national institutes, if you look into the scenario, Indian Council of Agriculture Research has published 17%, CSIR has published 15% of it, National Institute of Technology is 11% and even IITs and ICMR, they have also contributed for these predatory journals. The authors were also interviewed, as I said, that 20% of the authors, they said, they are unaware about the predatory journals. They have published and uh, they thought that it's a good journal and they have published. 10% published knowingly. That is very dangerous. They said that I wanted my uh, work to be published at the earliest because I was uh, due for my promotion. I was due for my degree. I need to publish it. There was no other go. I don't have the time to go for the peer review and revisions. That was the only option. Well, 70% did not comment. That means either they may be aware or they may be unaware, but they didn't comment on it. This is the scenario because we need not worry that we are the only people who have been uh, prayed by these predatory journals, but there are so many people who are knowingly or unknowingly uh, falling prey for these kind of predatory journals. Then what will happen? For example, uh, what is going to be happening? I am going to publish my article. My work is good, really. And I have the confidence that people will see either it is there in the good journal or in the predatory journals. What is going to be harmful in this? The first thing is for the researcher it's a, or the institution, it's a lack of credibility. Because in the 
this uh, the circulation of this journal or the popularity of this predatory journals are so low that even the good work will not be seen by others other researchers will not see your article will not read the article or will not cite our article then it will not be accepted in another journals for example if you just want to do the further work of the uh, uh, previous work our first work or the primary work is published in a one predatory journal then we we have to continue that work and we have continued we got a good result we want to publish it in a very good journal of elsewhere or any other good journal then if we cite our previous work that will not be accepted they say it is not peer reviewed they say it is not accepted that's why our further work will also be harmed the lack of visibility is one more reason one more problem with these predatory journals as i said these are not included in any of the databases medlines or citation uh, factors therefore the visibility will be very less once it is visibility is less the citation will be going less for our article the as i said these journals may be there today maybe for two three issues then automatically they will be vanished once they are vanished their website also be vanished so automatically what happens the good work with all our efforts and resources will be vanished from the field of science it will not be there for any time and once we are name are associated with these journals automatically they will pick our names as one of the editors co editors or maybe kind of contributors so it will be a kind of defaming our name itself once they know that the good work or the good worker is falling prey for our journals automatically without our acknowledgement they may take our name to their editorial boards for the science itself it is doing a very vast harmful effect like once it's a polluted now the whole atmosphere or the scientific field itself will be polluted with these kind of journals once it is published it is difficult to distinguish between the good peer reviewed articles from low quality papers for example uh, i'll take my example though i know all these things in, the, in my initial days i have also two three papers published published in these kind of predatory journals so what happens if somebody looks into my cv or the list of publications if they notice the first two articles which are there in the predatory journals then they have the suspicion whether this person has all the publications in these kind of journals so it will become very difficult for him to believe or to distinguish between which are the good journals or which are the peer reviewed journals so they have to go for thorough review of all the articles of a scientist then it increases or uh, decreases general science quality for example if a institute if it has say around 400 publications of these more than 50% 200 250 manuscripts are from this kind of predatory journals automatically the quality of the work the quality of the article the quality of the citation and the impact factor goes to very down so that it cannot be recovered then once you submit to the for example if i submit a manuscript to these kind of predatory journals where it is published and then later i come to know that this journal is predatory and i want to retract my publication this is impossible in any good journals any indexed referred journals pre reviewed journals it is definitely possible if i feel that there is a problem there is a lacuna in a manuscript which should not be published i can retract it any time whereas in these kind of predatory journals once we submit once it is published once we pay the article processing fees that's over it cannot be retracted any point of time automatically it is going to be vanish also then automatically after doing all this our research it's waste of resources it's a waste of time it's waste of resources at the same time we are going to lose our credibility and the name we are not getting any kind of visibility out of our article which is well deserved so we know like there are predatory journals they are operating very well and we know that what are the harmful effects with these predatory journals then the next question is how to avoid this kind of journals how to avoid the publishing of our article in these kind of journals the first thing is there may be any uh, there are several mails unsolicited mails requesting for you to submit the manuscripts let us not click on this kind of uh, request mails let us not open it which is unwanted sent by the unknown senders then we have to before considering the journal for publishing we have to look into the like uh, whether are there any kind of posts or the alarms which are saying negative about this journal 
somebody may be already have published and they got to know it about later and they say some blogs or somewhere it is mentioned that this article uh, this journal is a predatory journal don't go for it if we have to look for such alarms if there are any online in either blogs or in the any sites then we have to look into the journal site itself very carefully for their contact information whether it has published how long it is publishing the issues for example many of these predatory journals if you can see that it's uh, uh, their uh, last past one year there are two three issues that's it no more than that that means once they publish around three four issues they close it then they start with a new journal in a new name so that again they can attract few people if they keep it for a long time there may be some complaints there may be some allegations so they are very clever they just close it so we have to look into the number of past issues how many issues they have published earlier then we have to look into editorial board as i said again it's a deceiving sometimes it may give a very good uh, reputed person's name but we have if you know the people we can just contact them and say uh, just ask them whether are they really there in the editorial board of these journals and then we have to look into instructions of the many of these predatory journals doesn't have a stringent uh, instructions for the authors they say you just give the manuscripts that kind of uh, instructions are there a vague instructions are there it kind of a alarm for think about the genuinity of this journal then article fees and when we have to pay that again is a problem in some uh, manuscripts uh, along with the manuscripts they ask for this processing fees or the article fees that we have to be careful about then are the uh, other uh, how many journals are being published with the same company if it's a publishing house normally if, if you take elsewhere there are hundreds of journals similarly with the cluewell similarly with the blackwell so they have hundreds of journals is, are being published by them but these kind of predatory journals it is very difficult to find the number of journals associated with these the same publishers they say one or maximum two uh, journals are being published that too very recently so we have to just check for these factors in the journal website meantime there are uh, several sites which give us the real picture of the predatory journal so that we can avoid those kind of uh, predatory journals like one is uh, scholar this is scholar loyola that dot com publishers and there are different links like for hijack journals misleading metrics for example they say we are uh, uh, articles are being uh, indexed in so many journals we have such a high quality of impact factor those kind of misleading metrics are also available but this bls list is not available now but we can use their archives which is still working meantime we can also look into scopus web of science shimago google scholar metrics pubmed and we can go whether the journal which we are intended to publish our articles is being listed in any one of these websites if it is there in any one of these websites then definitely we can think of going for publishing our articles otherwise we have to keep it in a kind of a suspicions until and unless our suspicion is cleared by communicating to other authors or to the scientists or to the researchers our colleagues we should not go for publication publishing our articles in these kind of journals this is the same thing which is given in the flow chart like where we start with our uh, uh, manuscript is ready then we have to check whether it is there in the uh, copv uh, that is code of conduct for journal publishers whether it is there in that list if it is yes then we can go to the other then in the red box it is given the suspicion of journal being a predator so it's a flow chart i'll just share this with the uh, organizers so that you can just keep it for uh, your reference whenever we have the manuscripts ready uh, we have to go through this checklist so that we can go for a good journal rather than going into a predatory journal why i am so much concerned is like once we enter into a research field we do lot of work and we do lot of analysis of the data finally we come up with a manuscript we come up with a, a scientific research paper but where we are giving it this person should be genuine this journal should be genuine that is what the concern is that's why uh, my friends i stop here saying that there is a challenge in even publishing the basic thing is we should be aware about the fraud we should be aware about the predatory journals and we should go our uh, we should go for publishing our good work in good journal
Thank you so much. I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And I hope I could convey the message to the participants which they wanted to look, uh, they're uh, looking for. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you so much. Sir, my question is there. Mm -hmm. uh, whether, uh, whether there is a duplicate or fake journal list is there on website? Yeah, that is what I have given my, uh, that BL's uh, list. That is the site for uh, looking into these kind of fraud journals, uh, the predatory journals, duplicate journals, everything is there in the BL's uh, list. That is, I'll just share this, my presentation, so that in the last uh, third slide, it is there, madam. Yes, yes. Any other question from participants? No, ma'am, no. Uh, once again, I would like to thank the organizers, madam, especially you for yeah. communicating to me and the principal and the whole organizing team for mm -hmm. this event so that I can uh, share a few of uh, my thoughts with the participants. It was so nice of you, madam. Thank you so much. Sir, this information is very important before publishing any article or any paper. Sure, sir, madam, because, uh, sir, there is any idea regarding publication of book chapters? Again, again, it's a same issue. Like uh, there are a lot of mails received by almost all of us saying that uh, we are publishing a book and we are uh, requesting you for a book chapter. Uh -huh. So the first thing is we have to look into the publisher and we have to look into ISBN number. That is the indexing number for the books, what they are going to publish and from where it is being published. So that is the first information we have to look into. And also we have to request them who are the other contributors. So if possible, if you can communicate to the other contributors, definitely we'll get into know whether the book, which, uh, what they are going to publish is genuine or not. So these are the, some of the checkpoints where we can uh, check for the books, just like journals, what we are uh, There are number of emails like this. Yes, uh, yes, madam. Uh, for contribute. Uh, any other questions? AK Patil, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what of thanks, Gaisaka, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Continue. Uh -huh. yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. I am here to propose what of thanks. I am thankful to Dr. Uh, Harsha Hegde, sir, for delivering such a valuable lecture in this session. Such type of lecture must be there in FDP uh, on research methodology. Sir has given nice presentation regarding publications in peer reviewed journals. He has given the statistical data regarding publications. He has given the difference, he gave the difference between credible journals and predatory journals. And he also gave the information regarding what are predatory journals and how publication, how their publication procedure is there. These journals are mislead or misguided to researchers and before publishing, we must alert about such predatory journals. Unfortunately, there are 35% journals which are originate from India, but we must aware about that. Dr. Hegdeser has given the idea regarding selection of journals before publishing our work, we should check the uh, index status, citations, and impact factor of journal, how the quality of research paper is very important. He also explained the benefits of publications and a lot much more. Uh, thank you, sir, for your valuable guidance for us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am.